Instagram is, at least for now, the most important social media platform that you can use to leverage your real estate photography business, so I wanna share some tips that you can use to start promoting your work. First, bear in mind that Instagram today is basically the new photo portfolio. More people are probably going to see your photos on Instagram than any place else. Used to be that when you were looking for a photographer, you would search Google, and a lot of people still do. One of the first search results, though, that will come up is probably your Instagram page before your website. It can vary, but a lot more people have traction on Instagram as they're more involved with Instagram. When it comes to other social media platforms like Facebook, that's kind of dead now, and you know it's kind of a dirty place to be if you spend a lot of time on Facebook. It's not really that great for promoting your work because there's more than just people sharing photos or reels or things like that. TikTok, yes, that's very popular. It's more for a younger demographic. It's not as business oriented right now, and it also is facing its own set of security and legal challenges. So when it comes to photography, and especially pro photography, Instagram is where it's at. But moreover, Instagram is a place for photos and other content like Reels, and I'm going to get to that in just a second. The next thing though to be aware of is when you're posting stuff on Instagram, make sure it is only your real estate photography. If you're another type of photographer, that's great, post that, but you don't wanna have on your photography page, which basically, remember, is your new portfolio in a lot of ways. You don't wanna be posting pictures of your cat, your dog, your family. Those are all great, and I do the same thing on other pages, not on my Instagram photography page. If you follow me on Facebook, my personal page, you'll see me post pictures of my grandkids and whatnot. Don't do this though on your professional page. I don't do that either. This is where people are looking for photography stuff, maybe just for enjoyment, but also to open up the door for opportunities. The next most important thing is to make sure that your profile handle, your profile name, isn't something that is just amateur looking. You don't want something that says, I like pictures 789, or love cats 345, or something like that. You wanna have your handle that looks professional, either your name if it's not taken, your business name if it's not taken, or some rendition of it, and the trailing numbers or leading numbers, all that stuff just reeks of, I'm an amateur, there wasn't anything available, I didn't grab my handle early enough. So get creative with that, but something has to reflect reflect who you are as a business. That way people can come to you knowing that you're the one who takes the photos and not some weird handle that has nothing to do with your name or your photography business. And a biggie, when you're putting your profile together, make sure that you do have a link to your work, your website, in your bio or to other products that you want to showcase depending on what you're doing. If you don't have a website yet, then you need to take that step first because if you wanna get pro work, you have to show that you're a pro. Pros have websites, so make sure you have that. Put that in your link for your bio in your portfolio. And that way you can also at any time, if you happen to mention, see a link in bio, people will then go find more information about contacting you. And a big rule nowadays, it, there's been a big shift since the TikTok days, and that's the Reels rule. So yes, photos are still very popular and I post photos and I get a ton of traction on that. But when you take a look at the counts on the reels that I post, it's, it's just through the roof. So people are more attracted to reels and they don't have to be very complicated at all. So you can have just a slideshow of a few pictures, put music to it, there's apps that put that stuff together. I like to just use Premiere Pro to do all my work because I also do real estate videography. I've got it there, I can do what I need to and I can use an uploader just off of Windows to put that up there. But the thing is, consider reels from time to time and I'm not talking about reels where you're just talking to people. No showcasing your work. Remember that first thing that I talked about? This is your new modern day portfolio, so show your work. Don't get on there and talk. Instagram, you want people that want to be entertained for about 30 seconds seeing some photography work. So that's where you want to get the traction with something that has your work, not necessarily you. The biggest thing though, to be able to get traction is you want followers. Now you'll hear a lot of people say, likes don't matter and all that. Yeah, that's to a certain degree, but they're also a metric of how many times your stuff is being viewed and if you're getting traction out there. 
So you do want to grow your followers. It doesn't have to be in the tens of thousands. You're not going to get necessarily work from people that are in other countries thousands of miles away from you. But you do want to have enough people in a community that starts building up around your work. So what will attract those people to want to follow you? You need to post good content and interesting content at that. Not just some picture of like, this is what I did today, but something that can wow people. If it's not an interesting picture, a quick tip, just put some tips about how you did this and how you might do it differently. That also is very helpful. It keeps people engaged. And if you're not ready, if you don't really have good content, you're just starting out, that's an area I can help you with. As you may know by now, I do have online video courses on doing real estate photography, pro real estate photography, and I also have best-selling books on real estate photography as well, and I have links to all that down in the description for this video. Those are the techniques that I use for all of my work, so I'm sharing that in my courses and in my books, and you can see, of course, all my work here on YouTube and Instagram and also on Facebook. Anyways, Besides posting really good content, remember, eye-catching content that shows, wow, people want to look at it. Besides doing that, it's good to follow other photographers. And this isn't just a lead. This isn't a way just to garner, hey, follow my page too, which is something you don't want to do. Following other photographers will give you inspiration, give you ideas, and also start setting your bar, your standard, if you're honest with yourself, and you can say, maybe I need to improve in this area. I love how this person did it. And yes, I've been shooting real estate a very long time. You can tell by having no hair and a lot of gray hairs here on my face that yes, I've done this a long time. I've shot literally thousands of homes, worked with hundreds of agents. But the fact is, I still learn every day watching these other pros do their work. Very inspired. And it's not all real estate photographers. Photography is something I've loved for a long time. I'm sure you have too. So follow all kinds of photographers. Get inspired. Learn what they have. And they may get suggested to follow you. So it can broaden that. Now, when it comes to paying clients, real estate agents, builders, and remodel companies, stuff like that, yeah, you can follow them as well, and I do suggest that, but the one thing you don't want to do is start reaching out to them and messaging them right away. Hi, I'm a real estate photographer. Please hire me. That just reeks of desperation, which is also something you want to avoid in your posts. Hey, look at what I did. Hire me for all your real estate photography needs. That stuff, I know you want jobs, and I know that may sound great, but that reeks of desperation. What you want to show is that you're hireable and that you are in demand. Doing something like that just says that you're not. But moreover too, when you're following other photographers and you're following potential clients, you'll start seeing types of markets, things that they do. For instance, you see someone who's posting a reel, an agent or uh, some type of architectural client like a builder or designer, something like that. And the reel's okay, but you can do it better. Well, if you've been able to do pro photography work and you can post your work and you can post your reels, you could at some point, if there is any communication with that person, say, hey, just as a suggestion, you want me to make a reel for you sometime? Here's some examples of what I did. Very short, very simple. Just keep that open. Don't post it as a public comment. You would want it to either email them or do it uh, through the messenger on uh, Instagram. But open that door only after you've been established because you also want to show that you're in demand so you've got enough followers so far. But above all else, when you're sharing anything on social media, remember that it may be temporary because something else could come along soon and it could change the game. Now, when it comes to reels, which is something that has been changing the game in real estate photography, is that it used to be that we would do these walkthrough videos and they would take minutes and you could see the entire property. Well, <laughs> thanks to Instagram and to TikTok, everybody's attention span has gone to 30 seconds. In fact, right about this point in the video, probably about 30% of the viewers have already dropped off because they lost interest. And that's just human nature nowadays. In fact, by the time I started saying that to now, even more people probably dropped off. But what you want to do is you want to keep your content short. And so these walkthrough videos don't cut it anymore. And Try to get those videos on uh, syndicated out to these listing sites like Zillow and Realtor.com. They're very difficult nowadays and they keep changing their mind. So where is content king? 
Instagram. Realtors know it and builders know it. Everybody knows it, that this gets you traction, but making these reels is a lot harder than what a lot of people think. So what you can do now is you can leverage that. And that's what I've been doing too and offering to my clients is, yeah, I could do a walkthrough video, but I could also do a reel. Couple tips on doing that. Yes, you could use your iPhone for some intro stuff to the reel and then start using the pictures you've taken and do some Ken Burns types effect. If you wanna see a video, by the way, on how to do that, leave me a comment below and I'll consider maybe doing an entire tutorial on making those reels. But just a quick tip on that is that when you're using Instagram, you're talking about 1080 wide, 1920 high, so that means you probably wanna shoot in 4K. If you're shooting 4K and 60 frames per second, then you can slow it down. It also, also gives you a lot of room to move, pan, and do all the type of animation you would in Premiere Pro but you don't necessarily have to have an entire video because as you may have seen on a lot of reels, there will be some video and then there will also be pictures put into it. And it, things go very quickly. So even if you're shooting 4K at 30 frames per second, you're using a gimbal, chances are it's gonna be fine because you're gonna have very short segments. So that's really about it in a nutshell when it comes to Instagram and real estate photography. Remember, get good, get really good, be able to show that content out there. That is going to be your newest portfolio, but you still need to have a website that shows professionalism and that you've got also a portfolio on there. Be careful how you share content and eventually by also following others and really embracing the idea of wanting to learn from others, viewing others, being kind not Facebook, be kind, be Instagram kind, and yes, you can start growing your audience too.